Musk and click high, high energy breed. So first it's important to understand like what is high energy, what is medium energy, what is low energy, so that we can really determine are click high, high energy breeds? And if so, how much exercise do they need? Do they need more energy when they're old or do they need more exercise when they're older or do they need less exercise when they're older? If you guys are getting a puppy, you probably want to know um, how much exercise you should be giving your puppy. Or before you even get this breed, you probably should know if this breed is high energy because depending on your lifestyle, right, you need to match the breed with you and your family. So that's why this is an important topic. So low energy dogs usually are going to lie around most of the time. They make great companions for relatively low or non-active people. So, you know, if, if you're older and you're not as active, that type of lifestyle, you enjoy staying home watching TV, you don't have a bunch of kids you're chasing around, um, that's a, a low energy breed that you would want to be fit with. Uh, medium energy dogs are mellow for the most part. Um, but they're gonna have bursts of energy. So they're gonna be doing like, if you've seen any click high on Instagram, doing the zoomies where they're running all crazy, um, they have spouts of it, right? But they're not like that all of the time. And then there's the high energy dogs that are always ready and waiting for action. So those are the dogs that need a significant amount of exercise mentally and physically. And if they don't have that, they're the ones that are going to show signs of behavioral issues. They're bored all of the time. They're destructive. They're crying, they're howling, they're barking, that type of thing. What are the clique high, right? That's the question. AKC lists them as a high energy breed. Um, so that I thought was quite interesting that they automatically listed them. I would say that the clique high as a puppy and a young adult, are probably going to fit into the high energy category. Um, they are very active, they need a lot of attention, they need a lot of exercise, they need a lot of mental stimulation, they need a lot of training, um, and they will outgrow that usually, but it takes a while. And so I would say they will transition from a high energy breed to a medium energy breed once they hit three years old. So I wouldn't even say adult because an adult could be a year and a half, two years old. Um, but I would say once they hit three years old, sometimes even a little older, they're going to turn into the more medium energy breed. They're not going to be going through the zoomies all of the time. They are going to require attention and exercise um, and some training and just keeping them mentally challenged. But it's not as much. It's not as demanding, I guess would be the word, as the younger ones are. So like we really noticed Nala, of course she's a mommy now, but we really noticed Nala over the last couple of months has really calmed down. She used to be a spaz all over the place. Um, she's almost two and she's starting to slow down a little bit and not as crazy as she was. So keep that in mind. The first few years, yeah. I would say they're definitely high energy. One good thing about this breed is that they are small. They're not as big as your Huskies and big labs that have a lot of energy. So yes, they have that energy, um, but they get tired faster than some of those big dogs. Okay, so how much physical exercise does a clique high need? Um, so that really depends on their age. And so a clique high puppy is gonna have a lot more energy than uh, say a four-year-old Alaskan click high adult dog. And so keeping that in mind, we have to determine the formula for the exercise amount. And this is a general rule of thumb, but it's not something that you want to stick with consistently. You have to be able to monitor your dog and see if this is a good formula, a good fit for your dog, if they still seem like they have too much energy, if they're still being you know, bad dogs and bad behavior, or if they're exhausted and then they sleep for too long, then you know maybe you're overdoing it. So it is trial and error, and it's no one formula fits everybody, but a general rule of thumb is going to be five minutes of exercise, and this is physical exercise. Five minutes of exercise 
per month of age. So if you have a two month old puppy, which you just bring home, you're going to have five minutes of exercise times two. So that's 10 minutes, two times a day. 10 minutes, two times a day. And that is just your physical exercise, getting your puppy used to being on a leash. Do you hear that puppy crying? I gotta go over there. Um, and so then as they get older, you're going to increase that, right? So a six month old Klikai should have 30 minutes of exercise twice a day, where a one year old Klikai should have 60 minutes of exercise two times a day. And then once they're adults, 12 to 18 months, you're not gonna continually keep adding up and multiplying by two based on their age. It's just till they hit adulthood. So general rule of thumb, okay? So that's for physical exercise. And physical exercise is great and it's necessary for your dog, but it is not the only component um, to having a well-rounded, happy, healthy dog. Uh, you have to have mental stimulation, and a cleat pie definitely thrives on mental stimulation. So in addition to the physical exercise, they have to have that mental stimulation. Now, there's no formula for this. So you just have to base it on your puppy and how well they're doing, how tired they are. But generally speaking for me, when I have a new puppy, mental stimulation is no more than 20 minutes throughout the whole day. So I break it up into five, 10 minute sessions. Usually at eight, 10 weeks, it's really five minutes because a puppy really can only um, stay focused for like five minutes. Their attention span is like this little. And so after that amount of time, they're over it. They're not gonna pay attention to you and you've lost them. So if you've lost their train of thought and they're not focusing on you, really it's not gonna work. And if they get over whatever, like let's just say you're doing a puzzle or something with them and, and they get over it, then obviously you are gonna be able to gauge that yourself and know when you need to slow down. Um, and then there's gonna be times where they're getting older, they're getting older and they want more and they want more. And so you're gonna to have to just adjust that. So again, no set formula for that, but I would start off with 20 minutes throughout the day broken up, okay? Dogs require an outlet for their minds. So we gotta think, about what mental stimulation is really going to do. So intelligent dogs like the Klikai, it, they really have to be challenged. They really have to use their brain. And if we don't let them use their brain, they get bored and they will use their brain their own way. So that means they are going to find ways to use their nose, to use their brain and get into trouble, which means digging, chewing, bad behavior like barking and howling, um, just getting into trouble. So we gotta keep that in mind. Um, so it's best to challenge their minds to make for efficient training, to help them maintain a good behavior in and out of the home. So here are some good ideas for you guys to exercise your dog's mind beyond training. So yes, training is part of it, but beyond training, there's other ways that we can mentally stimulate our dogs. And some of this we kind of have talked about, but not all of it. One thing you guys can do is invest in puzzle games, right? So we talked about puzzles, there's puzzle toys, puzzle games, teach them new commands. Like not the normal sit and stay, but go on YouTube and Google different things that you guys can come up with and challenge your dog and challenge yourself. You don't, you'll be surprised at how much you're going to bond with your dog and how much better your dog is going to be when they're tired. A few other great ones is gonna be obedience training. So not just your general obedience that you're teaching sit and stay, but if you go to a trainer or go to a class or learn it online and do some deep, deep obedience training, um, it's really gonna work your dog. And then another one is rally. So rally is something that I've never done, but AKC has rally. Anybody can do rally. You don't have to have a purebred dog. Um, and what it is, is it's teamwork. It's you and your dog, and there's beginning, intermediate, and advanced levels. So in the beginning, your dog is on a leash with you, and there's like these 10 different stations, and in each station, you have to get you and your dog to do whatever the sign says. So it could be literally just weaving through a pole. It could be that you want them to sit. It could be that you're wanting them to go down. You, there's all of these fun little things and it gets more and more challenging over time. 
but it's working your dog. It's making you and your dog bond and you'll be amazed at how tired your puppy will be. Um, and it's just great exercise. It's out, you know, outdoors. And even with the pandemic, a lot of this stuff is open, um, opening up. And so you guys can do some of that stuff. Exercise ideas. First, let's just talk about normal activities outside, things that we can do. Um, of course, we've got walk, run, jog, right? So that's a simple one, we all know that. But we can also play fetch. We can teach our dog fetch and how to get it back. And we can just literally sit in the lounge chair drinking our wine while we're throwing something and they're bringing it back and throwing it and they're bringing it back. And we're exercising them and they don't even realize they're being exercised to them. They're playing with us. Um, so it's a great way for us to continue to build that relationship and trust and also get them their exercise. Tug of war, you might think like, ah, tug of war, really? But tug of war, with if you have the right toy, okay? So you don't wanna play tug of war with a small thing because you're gonna get your hands bit and we're already dealing with puppies who like to bite and mouth. But if you have something that's long enough, and you are working on teaching them when to release it and you're not going too hard, a tug of war is a great exercise um, for your dog. Find the treats, so you know, the whole hide and seek thing. Agility training, okay? So agility training is great, but again, you can't really do a lot of agility training until they're older. So lure coursing, L-U-R-E. Um, lure coursing is so much fun. Biking, so of course another fun exercise, but keep in mind when they're too young and they're not experienced, you, they can get hurt. So you need to go slow and you need to teach them and you need to have the right equipment. Hiking and exploring and swimming. Swimming is a great exercise. Um, scent work, obedience, and rally. So that's a long list of outdoor exercises that you guys can do with your dogs. Okay, so indoor exercises. So here are some things that you guys can do. Throwing the ball, fetch, uh, the laser pointer. Now this seems silly, right? It's a laser pointer. Of course, you don't want to point it at their face and their eyes, but this breed is a lot like cats. So they will chase the laser on the ground. And you can sit on the couch along the same lines as the um, the laser is the fishing pole. And the fishing pole is, I have it on our, our links of all of the supplies, puppy play dates. If you know anybody else who has another dog or a puppy that you guys can get together and have play dates inside your house. Another fun one, if you guys have stairs and it needs to be stairs that are not super steep, Okay, so if you have a two-story house um, and the stairs aren't too steep and the floors are not very slick, you literally are throwing the ball to the top of the stairs, they're gonna go get it and they're gonna run back down. And again, make sure that they're not too steep and make sure your puppy's not too young, okay? Because too much of up and down on the stairs can hurt their joints. So be aware of the age of your dog and how much is too much. Um, and even if it's not all the way up, Let's just say it's treats or it's their dog food. If you throw a kibble up four steps, they're gonna run up there and grab it and run back down to you for the next one. And then three or more steps, run back down. How easy is that? It's exercise. Would we be exercising if we went up and down the stairs? We would. So same thing for our dogs. Um, so that's a list of some indoor activities you can do. I'm sure there's more, but that's a few that are fun easy for you guys to do. Hi babies. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and consider subscribing to our channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos that we post. And if you want to watch more videos like this video, you can check out the video over here. Until next time, bye.